Well, it's been a while since we got to cover the story of an actual new champion. And after all the waiting, I am glad to say that when it comes to her lore, Belveth is in a really good spot. There are some small things which we could talk about, like fake thighs, but that's not really the topic of this video. Her bio is written in a cool way. It reads like a wiki article, which means that it precisely explains what she is. And I believe that is the reason why you are here. So without further ado, let's talk about that. What even is Belveth? Fascinated by the world of existence and eager to create her own world, Belveth is like a dark cancer that crept within the heart of the void. A cancer through which all of Runeterra would be consumed and rebuilt in her own twisted image. She has a massive hunger for new experiences, memories and concepts, which is why she is devouring entire cities with their populations. And after consuming them all, she is repurposing the information into a sprawling alien landscape known as the Lavender Sea. In other words, depending on what she consumes, the world she created inside the Void changes to match its image. And interestingly, even the Void is not safe from her voracity, as she spreads within it like a primordial ocean, forcing all before her to submit to her world or be destroyed. Though Belveth is new to Runeterra, her birth is untold millennia in the making, being the result of an allergic reaction between the Void and the reality. At this point you may be wondering, why are we talking about allergies? Well, thankfully, Belveth's bio recaps what's really happening with the Watchers too. And just to make the information as precise as possible, I'll also sprinkle in some info from Velkos's bio. Essentially, before there was anything, there was nothing. Just pure nothingness with only the Watchers floating around. It was so quiet and peaceful that even the Watchers weren't aware of their own existence. But then the nothingness was shattered when reality came into being. This woke the Watchers up. And since the only thing the Watchers ever wanted was to sleep peacefully, it is now their main goal to shut down the blinding light of reality. Yes, this technically means we are the baddies. And so, some of the Voidborn entities leashed out to defend themselves, erasing everything they consumed. They were named by the virtue of what they left behind, a Void. But as these beings interacted with reality, they themselves were affected by it, and they started changing. This is a new information to us. It might explain why the Watchers in Legends of Runeterra look like this instead of this. It's because, as this bio states, each time they touch the world, they mutate from their once perfect forms into hedonistic violent animals. And these changes happen for both the small Voidborn and the Void itself. After every battle with reality, every incursion, something more sinister grew within a hidden tomb inside the darkest recesses of the Voidborn tunnels. Buildings, sunlight, proto-human limbs reaching toward nothing, a jigsaw puzzle where none of the pieces fit, the void had taken a new hideous shape. In time, fueled both by humans opening rifts of war and watchers attempting to invade the Freljord, this blasphemous pocket of uncreation grew to embrace the opposites of the Void. Desire, want and need. In other words, every time humans interacted with the Void, be it during the war with Ikathia or the war of the Three Sisters, the mortal essence fed this black cancer inside the Void. And soon enough, it craved a leader. Someone or something who could write a horrific new chapter in the worlds above and below. A leader who could interface with these humans, tell them what was to come, and harvest their emotions and memories as they fought a bitter, fruitless war, until the last fires of civilization died and a new era spawned. This leader is Belveth, a terrifying empress born from the combined memories, experiences, and emotions of an entire devoured port city and its outlying ocean. Belveth's mind contains millions of years of perfectly preserved knowledge, giving her near omniscience as she prepares to destroy both Runeterra and the domain of her progenitors, the Watchers. 
To those lucky enough to be of strategic value to her, she does not lie, ask questions, nor obfuscate the truth. She simply states the nature of things. For with victory all but assured thanks to the very nature of the void itself, there is no need to say anything more. And to those who displease her, they will find her human form merely adaptational. Nerve endings, muscles and eye stalks as she unfurls her titanic wings to reveal her true monstrous figure. Ironically, the ancient Remans had a word for such concept. Loosely translated to God of Oblivion, it was a tribal myth of a remorseless deity who would erase all things without hatred, replacing them with itself. They named the city of Belveth after it, though the true meaning was lost after many hundreds of years. Lost to all, perhaps, save for the creatures that the city has become. So, as was explained here at the end, Belveth was truly formed when she consumed the city Belveth, after which she was named. But it also states that she consumed a portion of the ocean with it. That's why she has the fishy appearance, and that's why her realm, called the Lavender Sea, has the appearance of being underwater. As we learned from this bio, the void mutates to mimic whatever it consumed. In the past, I thought it was doing so willingly, but here it seems to be hinting that the void is changing from its perfect form against its own will. So, that was Belveth's bio. Long story short, Belveth is a unique Voidborn who was born in the heart of the Void after mortals started pouring their essence into the Void, be it willingly or not. She looks fishy because she consumed an entire city with a bit of the ocean too. And she has human parts because cities obviously come with human essence. But while that is it for her bio, Riot also immediately released her color story called Pinwheel. And this one really seems to be a setup for what's to come. As you'll see, the story happens directly after the cinematic, and it explains what happens next. It starts with Kaisa looking at the massive shape that grew all around her. The monstrous wings were 20 arms length, dominating her field of vision. There were half a dozen human arms holding Kaisa against a wall as the creature continued to expand until each of its teeth were bigger than a human adult. Kaisa had to admit, she liked it better when it was person-shaped. She tried to move, but her armor wouldn't let her. The armor itself was a parasite, one of the primitive creatures that came from the void, and even it was frozen in awe. Kaisa was surprised that it was even capable of such emotion. Either way, she was stuck in place. This seemed to be the end of her, so she frantically searched for a way out. She could fire her cannons into the wall behind her, or she could fire at the creature. Maybe hit its mouth? Jaw? She remembered how fast the monster was, and how big it is. Fast and big was not something she was used to. She knew that if she tried one last move, she would definitely die. But at least she could make it hurt. That's when the monster spoke, mentioning how its true self displeased Kaisa. The voice sounded like a song of millions, and it made Kaisa realize that's where all the people went. The now very former city of Belveth was destroyed by the void in less than an hour. Kaisa couldn't make it there in time, and she was only able to witness a giant glowing crater that replaced the once bustling metropolis. Trying to figure out what had really happened, Kaisa looked around and searched for all the missing people, Vastaya and animals, but she could only see fresh Voidborn horror. Balls of screaming torsos. It didn't make sense unless the monster was the city. It was Belveth. The monster agreed. It was true. And it added that the raw components of their life served as the genesis for her birth. Memories, emotions, history. She was as much Belveth as they were, and now she claimed the title as her own. As Kaisa was trying to take it all in, schools of Void Remora in tens of thousands started swimming around the Empress, like birds circling the peak of a mountain. It was beautiful, in a way. If the Void had a god, this is what it would look like. Hideous and monstrous, 
and beautiful. Kaisa was so struck by the enormity of what she was witnessing, that she didn't fully realize when the arms in the wall have not just let her go, but lowered her to the ground. It was hard to take in everything at once. It chose its own name, she thought. It was impossible. The Void don't have the presence of mind to do it, or the self-awareness. But more importantly, the Void didn't see value in names. It was the invention of the living world. They did not want them, so why did she? I'll fight you, said Kaisa, defiant but unsure of what to do or where to strike. I'll kill you. You will not, replied the many voices of Belveth, as it added that she was incapable of resistance. Others have come before, in the age before her birth. Each would be hero wielding weapons they believed would repel the void. But all were ultimately consumed. The meager fragments that remained served as salt for the Lavender Sea. Only two still live, and of them only Kaisa retained her full mind. Two, Kaisa wondered. You and your father, the monster replied. Something sank in Kaisa's chest. Her thoughts spun wildly, verging on the edge of panic. But for now, she stayed focused on the moment. There was no trusting whatever the Empress was. Kaisa lashed back that she was lying. It wasn't even possible. But the Empress confirmed that she was not lying. She had no need to. The Void's triumph demanded no lies or questions. She could show her. That's when the space contracted. With Belveth's gigantic body pulling and distorting, shrinking until its pretend head reformed, giving her a semi human appearance. You are alive because I allow you to live, the Empress spoke. She hoped Kaisa realized that. Kaisa wanted to object, but remembering her speed from their encounter, she decided to stay silent. Also, fighting her in her own domain wouldn't be the smartest decision. Kaisa did some quick calculations in her head, her eyes darting around, trying to figure out what she was up against. Belveth's human face twitched with interest. Then it curled her lips and began mimicking her. Kaisa already knew she had lost. No matter how fast a person could think, no matter how fast they could react, they couldn't match the combined brain power of human biology. In the time a tactician could think of a plan, hundreds of millions of possibilities ran through Belveth's mind. This was the power of the stolen memories of everything and everyone who passed through the old city. So what happens now? Kaisa let out. You will follow, the Empress replied, as she glided through the chaotic mess of partial buildings, ghost limbs, sewn together semi-objects, and pearlescent structures in the likeliness of human beings walking through a garden. Even by Void standards, this all seemed weird. Belveth then allowed Kaisa to ask whatever she would like. So, Kaisa asked the obvious. What was she? She did so right as she stopped her gag reflex, after witnessing a teddy bear fused with gull wings. Belveth replied that she was the Void. And this was what she would become. Kaisa was confused because the Empress mentioned that she was made from people. So did she want to become a city? The Empress explained that the Void existed for millennia, before the first stars were kindled. They simply were. Singular and silent. But then came sound. Reality was born from those whispers. And it consumed them. They were twisted by its influence. Broken, transformed, they could not go back to what they were no matter how they struggled. Her progenitors, the Watchers, attempted to invade and destroy existence, but they were tainted by it, driven to desire worship, to gain greater understanding, and in an instant they were betrayed, to change so forcefully, so completely, only to be cast aside. It filled them with indescribable hatred. They would annihilate all of reality without a second thought. Belveth guided the two of them to a massive chasm, and Kaisa saw massive holes beyond the faint sunlight. They were void-born tunnels. That's what was eating Talia's people. That's what destroyed Belveth. 
and that's what opened up to consume the 10th city in the south. Everything the Void devoured in Shurima ended up here. But, Belveth continued, their metamorphosis was incomplete. Only now was the true transformation beginning. She didn't want to become one city, she wanted to become all of them. With a gasp, Kaisa reached the pinnacle of the precipice. She and Belveth were gazing upon not quite a city. It was corals shaped into bizarre endless sea of inverted Shuriman buildings, with dark shapes shifting along winding crooked streets. Nothing was right, nothing was correct, as if there wasn't enough information to finish it. Kaisa protested. The Void wanted to erase everything, it couldn't exist. To finish this, the Empress would need everything. Belveth agreed. Everything. She was the Void. She would devour everything until nothing was left. And she would exist, because there was nothing they could do to stop her. And so, the Empress gave the Daughter of the Void an offer. Kaisa's world had to end for the sake of her world. But those who came before them, the Watchers, would not stop at anything. They would destroy all worlds to stop the burning of reality. Kaisa stared into Belve's false eyes. She couldn't believe the Empress asked her to help wipe them out. Why would she ever do that? Belveth explained that if she helped in destruction of the Watchers, she would spare her kind. For a moment, a month, a year or more. Perhaps in time they would find a weapon to slay her, or a hero to face her. They would not, but they could try. So she offered a chance. It was more than the Watchers would give her. Kaisa's rage boiled as she asked, what if she didn't want to? What if she killed her here? Belveth answered, she could not. She lacked will, knowledge and strength. The Empress was her only salvation. That's when Kaisa's armor started shuddering violently. The suit shivered with fear and Kaisa couldn't control it. She looked away from the Empress for just a moment to regain control, only to get stabbed in the chest by the Empress's razor-sharp wing. Kaisa struggled to break free as she was lifted off the ground. She tried firing her missiles, but they had no effect. The Empress spoke. Daughter of the Void, you will find the Watchers and confirm the truth, or your light will be snuffed out side by side with all others. This is not a threat. It is my promise. The Empress released her grip and Kaisa rocketed into the false sky above. As she left the Lavender Sea through one of the Void Tunnels, the Empress once again gazed over her incomplete world. Moments later, Kaisa burst through the sands of southern Shurima. The former city Belveth smoldered in the distance. A cancer that would consume the world. And that's where the story ends. There is an interesting thing to mention. The story did not talk about Kaisa's corruption. Whatever is happening with her splash art, we still don't know what it is. What Belveth did mention is that there are two people who faced her void before. Those would be Kaisa and Kasadin. Both survived, but only Kaisa remained her full mind. This means that Belveth is teasing the fact that Kasadin may be going a bit crazy. I believe that's where the story is heading next. I wouldn't be surprised if Kaisa was forced to fight her father. Now, interestingly, this story also explained what is happening with the Watchers in the Freljord. While before, in the lore, we could only ever see the eyes of the Watchers, the cards most likely revealed what the Watchers look like after their final transformation. It also explained why the Watchers cared about Freljordians worshipping them. They were simply affected by mortal emotions. With all this new info, it seems like this is setting up an event. Especially the part with the Watchers in the Freljord. You know, lately Sejuani's story was all about that. Also, they keep referencing sound breaking the silence of the Void. I wonder who that's talking about. The sad news is, this seems to be setting up a Void event for the future. I don't think it is happening now. I don't know how to feel about that. 
after so much setup with all the different stories and with the new cinematics, Riot, don't you dare skip a summer event. I wanna see Orn in action. 